Um, here we are, guys. Here we are smack dab in the middle of the most wonderful time of the year. Are you feeling it? Are you feeling it? Let's be honest. Not all of us are feeling it, I'm sure. I mean, I do think it's a special time. I think it's a special time where mankind seems a little kinder, maybe just a little bit more friendly, a little bit more um, willing to accept, accept mistakes and accept things in our lives that don't go so well. I think it's an interesting time because it's one of those things that we actually um, have a time of the year where we spend more time together, uh, maybe baking cookies or watching Christmas movies together. I don't know how often you guys sit down to watch movies, but Christmas movies are obviously a big thing, and I think some people and some families sit down together and do that. You know, I love Christmas. I'm one of those people that's a little bizarre. I put up probably five trees. Um, I decorate almost every inch of my house. I enjoy Christmas so much that uh, I want to see it everywhere. I just want to notice it everywhere. So, you know, I think Christmas is a beautiful time, and I love it but I think all of us can agree that it's kind of a noisy time also. I think it can be a very noisy time in our life. I think there's always something or someone that's yelling for our attention at this season. And I think the truth is that our normal lives are so busy and so stressed that when it comes to Christmas, we just try to fit more busyness inside of it, and it can really be stressful. I believe that the season's just not long enough. Isn't it? I mean, don't you think it's just always so rushed? It's always so rushed. It seems like we get down, I mean, Halloween, they're already playing Christmas music. But, you know, there's this thing where, like, you deal with Thanksgiving, and then you only have such a short little window of enjoying the Christmas season. You know, and it's really not supposed to be that way. We're actually supposed to keep our trees up a little longer and keep that idea, this Christ celebration, in our hearts a bit longer but I think sometimes we just kind of rush through it instead. We don't slow down enough so many times to enjoy the stillness and the quiet of the season and really think upon its true meaning, which is a God who sent his son to die on the cross for our sins and to find our way back to him. I think we can get wrapped up in this whole idea of presents and, and decorations and food and all that stuff, and we don't really always think about what it actually meant. I think sometimes when we think of Jesus, we can kind of diminish the thought of what it was that he did. We think of it as baby Jesus, something we can control and maybe manipulate. We understand that Jesus grew up and he died on the cross for us. So that's what we have to remember at this time. I think women, I think we feel especially the pressure of trying to make Christmas magical and really important in our families. I mean, I do, I know for sure. I want it to feel special. I want us to really enjoy it together. I think so many times, like I say, our normal lives are so noisy and they're difficult to imagine, you know, manage and, and keep track of. But I think what happens is at Christmas time, there's so much to get done all the time that this wonderful, most wonderful time of the year can become even more loud and overwhelming. I think the noise of everybody wanting to talk about what they want to give or what they want to get kind of can be too noisy. The noise of the calendar and all the planning, there's never enough time to get everything done that we want to do. You know, I would love it if I could sit down and just wrap my presents when I want and sit down with a cup of hot chocolate or coffee when you want. And it always seems like there's something on the calendar that takes away that time. The noise of all the swiping and the spending. We all know that can be very stressful. So there's a lot of distractions that come with this season. You know, every single year I try to start my shopping earlier. I'm really one of those people that I tell all my, my you know, daughter, my daughter-in-law, I tell them all, get their list in early because I'm going to buy everything early because I want to get it all done, you know. Never fails. I'm still at the end trying to grab some few things and it never really works. But, you know, the, even with shopping online, there's still a lot of noise that comes with that. You still have the emails. You still have the, the shipping notices. You have the deliveries, the boxes. I don't know about you guys, but dealing with boxes, sometimes at Christmas it's like, I'm tired of dealing with the boxes when they show up. And it's just a lot of noise in our lives. So how do we quiet things down? How can we get it quiet in our lives? Well, think about it this way. 
When you're in a place where the noise is too loud and you're trying to speak to someone, we either do one of two things. One, we can try to escape the noise, right? We can try to get away from it. We've all been in concerts when you're in there and it's so loud that you walk out and your ears are ringing, but you're like, wow, I can finally hear. Or what happens when we try to hear somebody sometimes in a loud place is we can just yell louder to them if we're trying to communicate. They yell louder, we yell louder. And we just keep going back and forth instead. And I think that's what most of us keep doing in our lives. I really think that's what happens. I think when the world gets noisy, a lot of times what we do is we just yell all the louder ourselves, even during the Christmas season. I think so few of us ever really try to escape the noise. And I think that's because we've gotten so comfortable with all the noise, all the racket, all the craziness. And it's just normal to us. And I think it's really sad because I think so many of us don't even want to escape the noise. Because we actually can't even handle the quiet anymore. We're unsettled by it. It gets too quiet and we don't know what to do with ourselves. And I think that's a dangerous place to be because I think we do need quiet. I think most of us have a disease that has become prevalent in the last 50 years or so, known as sedate phobia, which is actually the fear of silence. And I think so many of us have that. We don't even realize that we have it. We don't realize that we have this. And I want to kind of go through a few things to see if maybe you are showing some symptoms of sedate phobia. When we get into our cars, immediately when we drive, we turn on music, podcast, something, immediately to fill the silence. When we come home to an empty house, immediately we turn on something for background noise. Some music, some TV. I am the generation of TV. Some people, I'm like, I just can't imagine you don't turn on your TV. My kids grew up with the background music, television, commercials. I don't know, it's just some reason that was my generation. But are we always turning something on for the background music? Something that's going on behind the scenes, something that fills out that silence. How about when people are silent for more than a few seconds in a conversation, you feel like you have to jump in immediately and say something? Because it's just this big matzo ball hanging out there when no one's talking, right? You're like, what? Even that, think about it. When I look at you and I have nothing to say, it's kind of uncomfortable, isn't it? For some reason, we just want to say something. When we speak and we can't find a word, finish a thought, what we do is we fill in the gaps with, um, 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 um. We play the TV, we play game consoles, podcasts, music, scroll Facebook, Instagram, play TikTok videos. When we eat, when we go to the bathroom, and even when we sleep. There's no silence anymore. There's no silence in your lives. We just keep kind of filling it all the time with noise. And I think so little of our time is filled with silence. When and how did we ever become so uncomfortable with silence? I think one of these things is the reasons why. No doubt about it. I think iPhones and phones have exasperated the problem. I think they have become a huge distraction. Even when they're silenced, they're still yelling and screaming, aren't they? We're always looking. Someone's trying to, oop, my cameras are going off. Someone might be at my house. I better look real quick. Every single thing is a distraction with the phones. I think we become so addicted to phones in our lives. Gosh, I remember when we used to leave the house and you were not tethered to a phone. Yes, was it scary when you'd break down? Absolutely. Terrifying. But I'm going to tell you, there was a lot to be said for that idea of getting away from a phone and not having it go off every two seconds, constantly interrupting our thoughts, 
constantly interrupting our lives, constantly trying to pull us away from living. Studies have shown that many people actually experience withdrawal symptoms, even when they're separated from their devices for a very short period of time. They kind of become an extension of who we are. Do you remember the old American Express commercials, you can't leave home without it? We can't leave home without it. How many of you guys have ever driven back from where you're going because you realized you forgot your phone? How many? Yeah. All of us, because we're like, man, we can't go. You know, people did for generations of time. They would just leave the house, and they would just be like, throw caution to the wind. We're just going to go somewhere. We're going to gamble with our lives today is what we're going to do. We don't do that anymore. We're scared. We're scared that we aren't going to be able to be contacted. You know, we hear all the time, it says, turn your phones off when you're driving. Don't text and drive. I'm going to tell you, if I've seen so many people cross the center line coming at me and then rear back, because they are texting and driving. I try not to. I actually have started to get my phone in the back seat in my purse so that it doesn't constantly distract me because I do think it's a distraction in our lives. One of the things that I totally believe, totally believe this, is that silence is underrated. And I think it's so necessary in our lives to have. If you look at the scriptures, you can see so many times that God just tells us to do one thing. He says, be still. Be still. And that's in our silence a lot of times that he will actually speak to us. And I wonder sometimes if that's not the reason why we don't feel close to God. Even at this most wonderful time of the year, that way might be just all about just the, the ribbons and the bows and the presents and the baking and all that, but we don't necessarily feel Christ in this season. And I think it actually could have something to do with not getting quiet. You know, God meets his people in moments of silence. He encourages us to practice moments of silence. And we know that Jesus himself did the same. He actually would go off and have moments of silence where he could actually talk to God, his Father. Jesus modeled that for us. Well, Psalm 62.5 says, Let all that I am wait patiently or quietly, I mean, before God, for my hope is in him. Let all that I am wait quietly before God, for my hope is in him. Exodus 14, 14 says, The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Maybe you don't feel like God's battling for you. Maybe because you're doing all the work. And he says, no, if you get silent, I could do things for you. I will fight for you. But be still. Psalm 46, 10 says, Be still. And know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. We have to remember to have moments of silence in our lives. Not to constantly feel every single moment with something that disrupts that silence. We cannot let the noise of the world drown out the voice of God. And I think that's what we do so often. We constantly let the noise just take over all the time. We don't escape it. So we can't hear God's voice when he's trying to speak to us. You know, I love God so much because he just proves to me over and over again how much he pays attention to us. I've been sick for about two weeks and every single night, I'd sleep in my chair. Last night was the first night I got to sleep in my bed. And every single night, I'd sleep in my recliner, and I'd have my phone next to me in case I have to have something, because, you know, I need them. And I was woken up from my sleep, and it was immediately God speaking to me. And what I heard him say was, slow down, lean in, and hear the whisper is what he said to me. 
And I immediately grabbed my phone. It was good for that reason. I hurried up and wrote it down because I didn't want it to be one of those Jerry Seinfeld things where you type something and then the lady's like, I can't figure out what this says. Do you know what this says? To everybody, he had that moment when he woke up and it had a funny line he was given in the middle of the night. But I think what God was trying to do in that moment was trying to show me, yes, slow down, lean in, and hear the whisper. And I think when he wanted me to hear that is because he wanted you to hear that. What happens when someone whispers? What do we do? We lean in, don't we? We lean in. We're like, what are you, what are you saying? You get closer. See, the problem is we're not close enough to him. We don't lean into him. So we can't hear the whispers that he's trying to tell us things. We constantly keep letting the noise just disrupt our lives over and over and over again. If we don't escape the noise, we will miss it. We will miss the voice of God because it's in those quiet times that he actually speaks to us from his word, in our prayers. And if we don't slow down and lean in and hear him, we are going to miss it. You know, prayer is talking but it's also listening. The problem, what we do is we throw out all of our words and it's just loud noise, just constant listen, just us talking, 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 and God's like, just slow down. I have something to say. But usually what happens at that point is then we escape and go on to the next noisy thing instead. Instead of taking a moment just to listen instead. You know, it was a gentle whisper that God spoke to Elijah when he was tired and felt like giving up. Now, Elijah just had this amazing experience where he was actually talking to the people who were worshiping Baal. And they all were saying, their God's better than our God. And he proved this whole experience by them. Nothing would happen to burn up the offering when they were trying to do it, offering the Baal. But Elijah had this experience where he poured water upon water and don't, don't, uh, dug a trench and actually poured more water, and he prayed to God that he would come down and burn up everything, and God did. He has this amazing experience, loud, I'm sure. Everyone loud, everyone running around. They said that the the people who were worshiping Baal cut themselves and were, were yelling and screaming and doing all this. But immediately after that, Elijah goes to a, quiet place. He takes off because Jezebel is going to kill him. And he goes there and he's exhausted. He's so tired he doesn't know what to do with himself. So God actually meets with him. But he does it in a different way than what Elijah and I think most of us would ever expect. In 1 Kings 19 11 through 13 it says, Go out and stand before me on the mountain, the Lord told him. And as Elijah stood there, the Lord passed by, and a mighty windstorm hit the mountain. It was such a terrible blast that the rocks were torn loose, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, there was a sound of a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Many times, God is going to speak to you in the whisper. Those quiet moments when you're just by yourself, and you're going to hear something, and you're going to say, was that God? That's what's happened to me so many times. When God spoke to me before or ever in my life, it's always been when it's a quiet time. He doesn't knock on the door and bang to get her attention. I think so many times this just is that whisper. That's how we got the attention of Samuel in the Bible. When Samuel was going to sleep to hear his voice, Samuel, Samuel, to just yell out his name. I think if we're not quiet, we miss it so many times. You know, it even says in the end in Revelation that there's a moment before the trumpets blow and everything, that there's a half hour of silence in heaven at the very, very end. Silence must have a great meaning. 
if even that it happens. Silence is something that we really do need to practice as believers. And I don't think we do it very well. I think sometimes we're really good maybe with worship, maybe with praise, maybe with talking to God, maybe with trying to read his word. But I think so many times we're just not good with the silence. I think we have to recognize that silence is so important because it's something that we need to have in our lives to better ourselves, but not just that, but to better our relationship with others, then also to better our relationship with God. Silence is an opportunity in our life to just listen. You know, when you, if you like to, I, I love birds. I love birds. I love watching birds. It's one of my favorite things to do. Most of my house is filled with birds. I don't know why I've always been so drawn to them, but I have. But you know, the thing is, you don't run out to go chase and see birds. What you do if you want to see birds is you go and you sit. And you quietly wait. And birds show up. All of a sudden, you'll see them flying around you, doing certain things. There's nothing better than in the spring, and we have all of our little birdhouses and watch the moms and the dads, the wrens, feed their babies. That's when you see them, when you're quiet. You know, waiting in the quiet will actually feed your soul if you let it. How many times have you ever had the thought, there's so much noise that I can't even hear myself think? So many of us. You can't think because there's so much going on. You know, we have to turn off the devices. We have to turn off the music. We have to turn off the TV, the podcasts, and just sit and think and just listen. Go to the quiet place that you have. And when you finally get alone or you get in your car, don't turn anything on. Just be silent and listen. Fully give your attention to people around you. This is a relationship killer if we let it. It will kill your relationships. I'm going to tell you, the best Christmas gift you can give to someone at this season is to just listen to them and quit putting something in the way all the time. Just spend time with family. Maybe at this Christmas, Christmas season you could do something great like when you walk in the door, put your phone someplace where you're not going to see it, hear it, listen for it every two seconds. I can promise you for years, if there was an emergency, someone will get your attention if it truly is an emergency. They will find you. We don't always have to be waiting for an emergency on this thing. Then slow down. Just slow down. Lean in and hear God's voice. I think we do have a God who wants to talk to us so often. But because we're so noisy, he can't break through. You know, we have a God that could shout. He could shout over the noise if he wanted to. Obviously, he's most powerful. He could do that. But that's not who God is. God is a gentleman. He doesn't force himself on us. He's just waiting for us to listen. I think we can do that. We could actually hear him if we remove the distractions by escaping the noise and just being silent. I think silence opens up to us, but maybe he's going on in the world, stuff that we might miss. We might miss something. We might not notice somebody. We might not see an expression. We might not know when God has something for us that we need to do, somebody that we need to reach, someone that we need to talk to. To hear what's going on in our lives, we really do need to change and become more silent. If we do that, I think we can hear ourselves and what we're really searching for. We can really learn to hear others. And I think we can totally learn to hear who God is. So I want to say to you at this most wonderful time of the year, 
just slow down? Just slow down. Don't worry if everything's not perfect. Don't worry if everything's not just wonderfully decorated or the perfect baking is done. If it's actually causing you to lose sight of the most important thing, which could be your faith and your family and God, then let that stuff go and have a moment of silence. Start your day with just listening. Listening to see if he has something special for you. And don't let the noise of this world drown out the voice of God. I challenge you to do that this Christmas season. To just put stuff away. Think about what really the meaning is of Christmas. That it's not just about getting and giving. And it's not about doing all the time. But it's about reflecting on what God has done for us. The fact that he has given his only son to come to this earth as a baby, to grow up, to experience every single thing that we will experience. We have a God that cared so much that he wanted his son to live life like we have to live life here. So we could be relatable, he could relate, and we can understand what God has done. So at this time, slow down and just listen and lean in to the voice of God, okay? Well, Lord, we are thankful. We are so thankful. And Lord, forgive us when we don't slow down, when we actually just are always filling our heads and our houses and our cars with all the noise and all the things that distract us from you. I just pray, Father, that you would just help us, Lord God. Help us to really be mindful to want to escape the noise, that we would actually have a moment where we would sit and we would just hear what you have for us. Help us to turn things off. Help us, Lord, to just really understand what amazing thing you've done for us in this season. We thank you for all things that you've done, and we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen.